I think that if my nature is so bad and I try really hard and there's so many people around, then it's a whole human race full of thieves, liars, envious, greedy people. Have you uh, ever put anything above your creator? As in your own intentions or maybe money or your own your family? Anyone but God have you put before God at any time? No. So you always put God first? Yes. You wake up in the morning and say, God, I'm going to follow you? I don't actually say that, but, <laughs> but I might hard. be thinking it sometimes. I, I don't know. Okay, so you, sometimes you might have committed idolatry? Yeah, I think I have. So you'd be an idolater? I'm an idolater too. Idolater? Idolater. Yes, I am. Okay. Now, assuming... Wow. In the beginning, God and man shared in a loving relationship. But man's willful disobedience caused him to be separated from his Creator. God warned that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Not just physical death, but also eternal death in the lake of fire. Throughout history, we see man's efforts to reach God always fall short. Adam tried to cover his sin with fig leaves. Cain chose to do things his own way. In Babel, the people sought heaven through their own religious efforts. In Noah's day, the people neglected to heed God's warnings. The Israelites strived to keep the Ten Commandments, but always fell short. And the Pharisees thought good works would get them to heaven, yet no good work can offset sin. By your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, covetous fornicator. Oh my God. On the day of judgment, if God were to judge you by his righteous standards, would you be innocent or guilty? Well, it depends. Because I go to church. By your own admission, you're a lying, adultering, blaspheming idolater. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this judge, doesn't sound so good. <laughs> on Judgment Day, if God were to judge you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty based on that standard? Just based on that? Based on His Ten Commandments, which we just went through four of the ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be guilty? Yeah. Would you go to heaven or hell? Well, heaven. Why? Because I would uh, go to church and do confession and all that. If God were to judge me, um, he probably wouldn't let me in, but I think he has to take into account that I've also done other numerous things. That, you know, you, you can't go by, like I said before, a strict set of so you do can, this, you're getting in, so do you this, you're not. you blackmail God and say, don't look at those sins, I donated time at the soup kitchen? <laughs> If you want to call it blackmail, sure. I mean, come on, a good judge on this earth won't let that happen. What do you think the Almighty's going to do? Even a good judge on this earth does it. There's a good judge takes a blackmail. I guarantee you, there's definitely. Then he's not good, is he? Depends on your version of good. No good work can offset sin. Nevertheless, in every generation, God has faithfully pointed sinners to His solution his gift, the Messiah. By trusting in Jesus, God freely restores the fellowship that was lost in the Garden of Eden. The good news is that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In his great love, God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ to fulfill the law and to pay the penalty which our sins demanded. We sinned, yet Jesus died in our place. The Bible declares, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why he was put on the cross, to save us, because we're not perfect like he is. Everything you do, you're held accountable for. And 
God's wrath is just beyond belief. So if he were to hold you directly accountable for what you do, then you'd have no chance of getting into heaven. But, you know, like I said, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I put him there. He paid the, the price that I can't. So I'm saved because of that. Jesus came here to die for our sins. John 3, 16, for a lying thief and greedy guy like me is definitely good news. Um, I don't think I realize the news of it every day um, and as often as I should. But, you know, if you read it and you believe it, then it's definitely good news. To receive God's gift of forgiveness, repent of your sins and place your trust in Jesus. If you would like to do that, make Psalm 51 your prayer. Then read your Bible daily and obey what you read. God will never let you down. Mm -hmm.